Evelyn to Philip, January 1st, 1944. My dearest Phil, we had company to start off the new year, the Browns and Milton Sylvia. They are so thrilled with your letter and the way you express yourself that they can't stop talking about it. And Uncle gave Adele two dollars for Christmas and a Dubonnet handmade all wool sort of animal with a large silver and red ribbon, which Adele took to immediately. Adele walked all over the house and performed her whole bag of tricks. She was friendly with everyone, and they just couldn't get over Adele's singing. She sounds like a pussycat when she sings. She looked adorable in that rose dress the late Mrs. N. gave her, rose socks and white shoes. M and Phil also dropped in. Phil says he wrote to you. I'm wearing my suit tonight, and most everyone likes it. I'm also wearing the stockings Ruth gave me for Christmas and my black bedroom slipper shoes. I've given most everyone in the family that particular snap of Adele I like. Just room to say, I adore you, Phil, darling. A kiss and hug from your Ev. Philip to Evelyn, January 1st, 1944. Dearest Ev, no mail again yesterday. So instead of cudgeling my brains for the wherewithal of a letter, I played cards all evening. I enjoyed playing again, although my luck was pretty bad and I lost seven shillings. Excuse me, sweet. Here it is the first day of the new year, and I almost forgot to acknowledge the fact. Happy New Year, darling. May it bring you everything you are wishing for yourself and your dear ones. I can't help wondering what we will have to look back upon on New Year's Eve 1945. One thing I do know, and that is this. Regardless of what the year 1944 holds for us, at the end of it, we, you and I, shall have attained a fuller and deeper understanding of life in all its foibles. And this should help us to discriminate forevermore between the truly important and non-important, the essential and non-essential. Our senses of values will be matured and our perceptions and appreciation of any favors or good fortune heightened. We will have gained much more in experience than would normally be our lot in two years of living and learning. The waiting and wondering and longing and hoping and loneliness will be things of the past. All those aches and fears of the mind and body which are constant and paramount with us now will be as nothing then. The weeks and months which seem endless and unbearable now will then be a threat for a moment. So on this New Year's Day, 1944, I say to you, my own, look to the future eagerly for in it lies the balm of our present troubled spirits. For you, all the love of your fill.